Hey friends, Rebecca Rice here. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to set up a scheduler in Dubsado for your mini sessions. Now this is a really cool um, feature that Dubsado has because you don't have to have an outside program like Calendly or Acuity or anything like that. Um, you can have a scheduler just like that right in here in Dubsado and it's all connected, it can all be um, you know, added to the project together and it can trigger a workflow, which means automating your mini sessions process. And so this is a very powerful tool. I love using the scheduler in Dubsado. And so today I'm gonna to walk you through how to make the scheduler and connect it to a workflow. Now in another video I did, um, I walked through the workflow process and how to actually um, create those automations. And so I'll link that below for you to check out. Um, but for today, we're looking at the scheduler. And so um, I'm right here in a brand new scheduler in Dubsado. That's under our templates scheduler. And we're going to start in the basics tab. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to name our appointment. And so for me, I'm going to call this mm, Christmas minis. Okay. So Christmas minis um, appointment duration is how long your appoint your you know, sessions are going to be. So I'm going to say 15 minutes. And then when can this appointment be scheduled? So for the sake of our example, we're going to do indefinitely. There's a couple other options that you can check out, but I just use indefinitely. And then what times are you available? This is where um, you're gonna actually select your time slots that you'll have open. And so right now it has like these just automatically made. So we have to go through and delete those. So we're gonna click on the date, click this little X right here next to the time and we're gonna delete it. And then we're gonna say apply to all Wednesdays because my sessions are not gonna be on Wednesdays. So I'm gonna go through on each day and erase those session times. And then <clears throat> I want my minis to be, let's say on Saturday, um, October 3rd. Okay, so I'm going to click here. And the time slots that I want, let's say I want them to be um, 4.30, oops, to 6.30 p.m. You click add times and then apply only October 3rd. So I'm gonna click that and there it is. There's your time slots. It's nice because you don't have to put every single individual time slot. You already told them the appointment duration. And so this is um, just, you know, you put in your overall time block and it puts it in there. So once booked, show me as busy. Um, I'm going to, for the sake of our example, put available because I do have sessions booked that day. It's nice because Dubsado will not let you like double book. And so you can connect your Google calendar and it'll look at it and see if you're, you have any, you know, anything booked, um, which since I have sessions that day, I'm just going to put available because if I put busy, no time slots are going to show up. So when you do it, you're going to click busy. And then location, you can type in your location. Let's say studio house in McKinney. You can put an address there. You can get as specific or um, as general as you want to get. And then you have the option to create the email that would be sent with the scheduler. For me, I don't utilize this feature because I prefer to send my clients to a link. So I just give them the link to the actual scheduler um, and they go straight from there instead of sending it through an email. Um, but depending on what your workflow looks like, you can do it either way. Um, I just choose not to utilize that feature. So now we're gonna go into our advanced tab and um, we're gonna add some additional settings. Now these settings are optional, but they're um, pretty helpful. So the first one, prevention. Prevent booking less than however many hours in advance. Um, typically like 24 hours is a good idea. If you don't want them to be booked, you know, within a week, whatever, you can set that at however you want. Um, buffer time is if you want a little bit of time before or after each session. Um, I choose to do my minis back to back, so I do not have a buffer time, um, <clears throat> but you can if you want. And then increments, I do 15 minute increments, like we said earlier. Um, and then uh, rest of the appointment details, I just leave blank. Um, 
and now you're sharing options. So your welcome message is like a banner that's gonna be across the top of your scheduler. So I might say, hey friend, um, select your time slot below or something like that. Um, and then confirmation email, I'm gonna go in and select um, booking confirmation. This is a an email template that I already created and that's in your canned emails right over here. Um, and then additional form, this step is really important because um, this is what triggers a workflow to start. So if you wanna connect your scheduler to a workflow, meaning as soon as somebody selects a time slot, then it triggers this workflow to start and um, that's how you automate things. Things like sending a contract, sending an invoice, you know, maybe a questionnaire or a client experience guide, whatever you may do, um, this is where you do that. Now, I created a video before that I'm linking below um, that goes over my whole workflow process and how to set up a workflow, um, but all of that is triggered from this form. So you do need to have this form already created and I'll show you mine, it's very simple. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and you know select a form. Let's say I wanted to do Adriatica Fall Family Minis. Um, whichever, you know, whatever form you create, that's what you would put there. And then your redirect URL is just where you want them to land after they hit submit. And so if you leave it blank, it'll just have like a default message, which is fine. Um, I usually just do that. Um, down here is where you have the option to add an invoice, um, require a deposit to secure their booking. Now I choose not to do it this way because for some reason, I'm not sure why or how clients were able to select a time slot and not pay their invoice. And so I was getting booking confirmations without their invoice being paid. And then I didn't have a way to like resend their invoice. So it got really complicated. Um, instead, I opt to just include it in my workflow. So it still gets sent automatically and right away, just in a little bit different way. And I walk through that um, in that video that's linked below. So check that out. Um, but if you want, you can turn it on. I just keep it off. Um, notifications. This is where you can send like reminder emails about their appointment. Um, you can maybe have like a 24 hour reminder or like a week reminder. You create a canned email response, um, right here in canned emails and you can select that there. Um, and then your monthly view, this is just a different, like actual view of the scheduler. I usually like to turn that on because I like the client to be able to see the whole month. Even if I only have one day open, it just gives them like an actual bird's eye view of what the month looks like. And so um, I turn that on instead of a weekly view. That's totally up to you. It's your preference. Um, but that's all of the things in the basic and advanced tab. Now we're going to hit save. Okay. So here it is right here. We've got it all set up. And now you can click this little link button and you have a couple options. Now this is an embed code to be able to put it on your website. If you want to embed it in your website, it does take a little bit of like coding knowledge. It's not too difficult, but I typically like to just send the direct link. So I'm going to copy this link right here and then I'm going to go up here in a new tab and hit paste. And this is what it looks like. So there's our banner right there. Um, and then, you know, they are able to select their time slot. Oh no, it's not showing up. I think it's not showing up because I have sessions scheduled already. And so Dubsado is just confused. Um, but for yours, it'll show up and they can select their time slot from there. Once they select their time slot, they can fill out this form. So here's what the form looks like. It's super simple. I literally just ask for their first name, last name, and email. I wanna make this as easy as possible um, for them to submit because um, I don't want it to be super time consuming. And all this does is giving me information for their project um, because the project's gonna be created and it's triggering the workflow. And so I'm gonna go into the back end of this um, this form to show you what that looks like. Let me X out of this. We're gonna go to our forms over here and we're gonna go to Adriatica Fall Minis form. 
Okay. So it's super simple. Like I said, you literally like drag and drop just a couple of things. Um, and then under settings. So let me just show you on each form first. Um, I make it required and you map it to the project. So maps to client first name, last name, you map it to client last name, and then email, you map it to client email address. Okay. Super simple. Um, make all three required so they cannot submit without putting that in. And then under settings, you can select a default workflow. And so this is the workflow that's going to trigger as soon as that scheduler is submitted, which means they have also submitted this form that's attached to it. It starts this workflow. And so you want to have this workflow already created. Um, again, that video that I have below is the one that teaches you how to do that. Um, and then it'll just go. Your clients can select their time slot and you don't have to think about it. It just automatically goes. Um, it, it literally will send everything it needs to send. You don't have to think about it. It's amazing. But this is a really important step with that scheduler. Um, a couple other things that you can do is, you know, change your project status, whether that's inquiry or you can put it on a different, you know, select a time slot, whatever you want. Um, you can give it a title, um, just some simple things there, but this is the main part right here, the default workflow. So, um, those are the, the key parts. Now be sure to watch that other workflow video just to give you an idea of how to, um, actually set up those automations. And I think it'll be really helpful for you. Hopefully this was clear. If you have any questions about Dubsado or you would like to see another like type of Dubsado, um, tutorial, tell me below in the comments and um, I would love to get that set up for you. So um, hope this was helpful and have fun.